Good evening, Mr. Chip. Hello, sir. Good evening. What is your teacher? Welcome back. Glad to see you again. Very good, teacher. I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready too.
Hello, Rafael. Hello, teacher. How is the weather in your area? Yeah. No raining, it's cool. Ah, it's cool, okay. Yeah. Uh, my, my look is different. <laughs> it's uh, cool. You are ready, you are prepared for, for the weather, right? Repeat. You are prepared. Oh, yes, yes. For the cool weather. Yes, always. <laughs> always. Excellent. Mr. Castro, how are you today? Hi, teacher. Hello, sir. How are you? Fine, fine, very fine. Okay, glad yeah. to see you again. Hey, very good. Easy, easy this day. Ah, okay. Yeah. It was a light day. Yes. Okay. Oh, Raquel, you did. How are you? Hello, teacher. Hi, how are you? Fine. Okay. Okie dokie. Thank you. We are still waiting for the rest. Seguimos esperando a los demás. Okay, we have 10, we have 10 now. Okay, uh, so please try to remember uh, what we studied yesterday and that way uh, you are going to create some uh, sentences. Christina, welcome. Hello, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Okay. I'm nice. I'm okay. Okay. Norma Carolina, glad to see you. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. I am ready. Yeah. Okay. How are you? I'm fine, teacher. Okay. Thank you. Welcome.
Okay, let me check out the attendance now because we already wait. Okay, let me see. Okay, 11. We have 11. Okay, try to remember, uh, we are going to make a review. Do you remember the last topic we studied? Okay, first of all, I need to check up the attendance, but I'm just telling you what we are going to talk about, not at the beginning. Talking with you, okay. Okay, we are ready. Okay, let me see, I got 13, okay? Okay, I'm going to check up the attendance now. Yeah. 
Is it still raining in your area? Yes, yes. 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 Right here. Has been raining and right now it is coming again. Ana del Carmen. Ana. No here. Angel. Present teacher. Cristina. Present. Giovanni. Present teacher. Herson. Eh, Present. San Miguel. Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos. Karina. Present. Linda Ivet. Present, teacher. María Idalia. María Julia. Present, teacher. Marlene Nicole. Present. Eh, Marvin. Rain is coming, the rain is coming. Jesus. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay. okay. Yes. Nancy? Nancy Ivet? Okay. Norma Carolina? Present teacher. Rafael Ernesto. Present teacher. Eh, Raquel Judith. Present teacher. Reinaldo. Present teacher. Xiomara del Carmen. No está abierto ahí. Ana Cristina. Ok, thank you. Uh, esperemos que la lluvia no nos interfiera en la señal. At this moment it's raining cat and dogs right here. Ha iniciado una lluvia muy fuerte. Así es que esperemos que todo nos siga bien. Ok. Te van a ver aquí. Ok, teacher. Por aquí te van a ver. Si te acercas. Un poquito más. Si te acercas un poquito más. Ahí estás. ¿Lo viste? Si te acercas, está bonito por aquí te ves. La video conference twenty-five. You think of video. Okay, this is the video conference number fifteen. This is class fifteen too. And uh, we are going to remember what we studied yesterday. I have it here. In order that you can remember, I need uh, somebody read number one. Can you pass me that spanner? I need to type 
tighten up this bolt. Okay, what about number two? This workshop is very dirty. Let's clean, clean up this place. Okay. What about number three? Remember to switch off the power before you remove the machine. Okay, number four. I hope the computer wants to run again. Okay, number five. Number five, please. If you don't lubricate these tapes of machine regularly, they will seize up. Okay, uh, and the last one? The printer just stopped working. We need to call up a technician. Okay. Okay, uh, as you can see, we had the tighten up, clean up, switch off, turn off, piece up, and call up. Hello. We were talking about this yesterday, right? And now we are going to switch the topic and we are going to start doing something else. In order to start, we are going to read the following tips on how to organize and a preventive uh, maintenance plan. I invite you to go to your material. I have it here. That I don't know if it is uh, if you can see it very well. Just tell me if you are able to see it very well. Yes. 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 Okay. Hold, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I need to move a little bit. Okay, here we go again. Okay, we have a step one, two, three. Uh, you are going to read it and later on, uh, we are going to read it together because right now, what I want is that you understand all the steps that this plan has, okay? Uh, I would like to know if all of you have the material. Yes, teacher. Yes. Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, okay, I'm going to stop chatting. I need that you look your material, please. Okay, if you want, you can take a look at the screen. Uh, I'm going to read it for you. I hope that you can see it very well. And we have the set number one, get the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, 
You need to have the right people on board with the plan. Include that management, maintenance manager, maintenance technician, and any other staff who understand the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and member of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it is important to have them on board and fit up to date so you can get important feedback as you go. Step two, set goal for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task per input, set the goal you hope to achieve using the system. Begin training your task per and the computer skill they'll need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. And step three said inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you are considering including in your preventive maintenance plan, tagging the equipment as you go. Create a list of all assets you have responsibility for. Record the following detail as you go and keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Okay. Still raining here, really heavy. Okay, I invite you to, to read it uh, by yourself. And later on, we are going to read it again in order that you get familiar with the pronunciation of some words. Do it now, please. You can read it. And later on, we are going to read it again. Need to check. I read. Okay. Okay. Let's keep one. Get the right. Step one. Okay. Get the get the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with your the plan. Include those management maintenance managers, maintenance technicians, and any other staff who understand the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and remember of production and production control. You may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it's important to have them on board and keep up to date so you can get important feedback as, so you, as you go. Okay, thank you. Somebody who want to read uh, step number two? Me to check. Okay, do it now. Step two, set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task force input, set goals you hope to achieve using the system. Begin training your task force on the computer skill they need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Okay, thank you. Somebody else wants to read the number three, please? Me. Okay, do it. Three. Inventory the equipment and answer. Go to your facility and inventor 
all the equipment you're considering, including in your preventive maintenance plan. Taking the equipment as you as you go, create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go, as keeping mind that this process is much easier to carry out or organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Okay, thank you. Now I'm going to stop chatting. And you are going to read with somebody else. Let me see how many people do we have. Okay. Okay, I'm going to create some breakout room. And you are going to take your reading. That means that I'm going to put in trios and you are going to read one paragraph. Only one paragraph because we have three and you are going to be three in most of the group, okay? Okay, teacher. Ok, recuerden que solo van a leer un párrafo, porque son tres personas, van a leer un párrafo cada uno. Si el tiempo nos da para más, eh, luego hacen el, el switch, el cambio, ok. Ana Cristina, Norma, Marvin, go to your room, please. Norma Carolina, Norma Carolina, go to room one, please. Xiomara. Xiomara. A usted le corresponde unirse en el room 2, en el aula 2. Ok, este, yo tengo problemas de, de internet, teacher, aquí está lloviendo y, y como que me saca y vuelvo a ingresar. Ah, ok, ok, no problem, no problem. Yo creo que cuando nos mandó el grupo creo que me salió, me, me sacó y hoy me volví a meter. Yeah, but that, now you can go. Ahorita puede agregarse al grupo dos. ¿Y cómo me agregó? Ya no, ya, ya no tiene la, no le sale la opción. No. No, no me sale. Okay. Input set go to help and to achieve using the system. Begin training 
your task force on the computer skill. They need when to prevent my tense plan. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hola. Hello. One is not working. Okay. I'm back again. Uh, I don't know if you have enough time to keep in reading. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, do you need more time in order to keep in reading? Yes. Oh, it is enough. Yes. I need more time. You need more time, okay? Yes. Let me see the groups. The problem. I need more time, teacher. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm going to give you more time. But we are facing some problem of connection. Estamos experimentando eh, muchos problemas de conexión. No sé si en todos los lugares donde ustedes están está lloviendo. Uh, pero algunos están entrando y están saliéndose y es por, precisamente por eh, la lluvia. Así es que no sé si, si estoy hablando demasiado fuerte. En el área donde vivo está lloviendo como nunca ha llovido. Like, like the American said, it's, it is raining cat and dogs here, you know? Teacher, este, me saco, ya no llamo. Que yo no me pude conectar al grupo. Tranquila, Xiomara. Take it easy, take it easy. Yo creo que tengo, es que como está lloviendo, tengo problemas con el internet. Solo fue una conexión fugaz. Okay, okay, I'm going to recreate the groups again. Voy a crear los grupos de nuevo porque no. Teacher. Hello. Eh, con José Miguel, no, él nunca apareció ahí, solo. Solo que este, como que estaba conectado, pero no, no, no pudimos hacer nada, no, no lo escuché ni nada. Sí, algún problema ha tenido de conexión. Voy a, a hacerlo de nuevo los grupos. Okay, hold on a little bit. Okay, here we go. I hope that you can go there and try to read a little bit, okay? Let us do it now, please. Please join to your room. Ana Cristina, Ana Cristina, go to room three, please. Xiomara, Xiomara. Xiomara, go to room six. Go to room six, please. Okay. Okay, in this moment, uh, 
all the the students are in their rooms practicing reading. We are facing problem in the internet connection because the raining. But we are here trying to do our best. Okay, welcome back. Well, Tiene apagado el micrófono, teacher. Micrófono, micrófono, ok. Here we go. I'm going to share uh, the, the book with you in order, the, the reading, in order that you can uh, see it here. Okay, the topic of this, it is just really following tips on how to organize a preventive maintenance plans, okay? We have only uh, three steps that we need to follow. And I would like to hear some volunteer who wants to read it. All depend if you want to let me see. I got it here. Okay, here we go. Okay, now you can see it, right? Yes. Hello. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay, yes. okay. Okay, I need uh, three volunteers. Necesito tres voluntarios. Me va a leer un párrafo cada uno. Uh, then another three, and then another three, you know, 
a fin de que puedan participar lo más que se, sea posible. Ok, let us start now. Me, teacher. Ok, Ana. Ay, mm, Marlene. Oh. Ana, Nicole. <laughs> ok. Uh, step one. Ah, Marlene, sorry, Marlene. Yeah. <laughs> okay, step one, get the right people on board. Before you begin to organize your preventive maintenance plan, you need to have the right people on board with the plan, including top management, maintenance managers, maintenance technicians, and any other staff who understand the way your system operates. This could include people from data processing, accounting, craftsmen, and members of production and production control. You, you may not need input from each of these people at every step of the process, but it is important to have them on board and keep up to date so you can get important feedback as you go. Okay, thank you. Somebody else, please? Thank you, sir. Okay. Do it. Step two, set goals for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task force to put set goals to help to achieve using the system, begin training your task force on the computer skill that you need when your preventive maintenance plan was in full effect. Okay. Uh, somebody else who wants to read number three. But first of all, I'm going to read number two. Okay. The step two, set goal for your preventive maintenance plan. Using your task first input, set goal you hope to achieve using the system. Begin training your task force on the computer skill they'll need when your preventive maintenance plan goes into full effect. Okay, somebody else want to read uh, step three, please? Only one, only one. Me, teacher. Okay. Step three, inventory the equipment and assets. Go through your facility and inventory all the equipment you're considering including in your preventive maintenance plan. Tagging the equipment as you go. Create a list of all the assets you have responsibility for. Record the following details as you go. And keep in mind that this process is much easier to carry out and organize with the assistance of a good preventive maintenance software program. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if somebody else wants to read it or yes, we can discuss uh, about this topic. What can you tell me related with this topic? Maybe you have some experience about that, you know? What I need is that you give me a kind of explanation of what preventive maintenance plans. What is, what is that? I need that you have some ideas about what we are talking about and what you have read. What can you tell me? Hello? Hello, hello.
What can you tell me about what is a preventive maintenance of, of, of plan? Do you have some ideas about it? Hello. Can you hear me? No? Yes, sure. Ah, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, uh, according, according to what you have read, uh, we are talking about a plan that is going to resolve uh, some problems suddenly when uh, we face it. Because uh, preventive maintenance, uh, it is like a, it's a it's a regular and uh, and routine maintenance of equipment and asset in order to keep them running and prevent any costly unplanned downtime from unexpected equipment failure. For that reason is that in your company, you need to have uh, something like this. A successful uh, maintenance strategy requires planning and scheduling maintenance of equipment before a problem occurred. A good preventive maintenance plan also involves keeping record of past inspection and the uh, servicing of, of equipment. Because of the complexity of maintaining preventive maintenance schedule for a large amount of equipment, many companies use preventive maintenance software to organize their required preventive maintenance tasks. And when we talk about this, I know that you got some idea about what we are talking about. It. I, I consider that it, in your workplace, you you have a, a, a preventive maintenance plans. Is that true? Do you remember? Do you keep in mind? Yes? No? Yes. Ah, okay. Es como un plan preventivo de mantenimiento, ¿sí? And what is the first thing that we need to do in order to, to have a, a preventive maintenance plan in a company? What is the, 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 the first step that we need to do? Tell me. What do you remember about the first step? Check. For example, teacher, mm -hmm. check the track once a fortnight. Okay. Uh, what else? In my case, every Monday check the maintenance, the ma ma machinery. 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 Yes. But but talking about a general, in a general way, if we talk of, in a general way, talking about a plans. What is the first step according to the reading? What is the first step that we need to pay into consideration? Get the right people on board is ah. the first. Ah, okay. What, what, what is the meaning of that? When, when it said that we need to have the right people on board, what is that? What, what, what Tener la gente correcta, adecuada en nuestro equipo. Okay, okay, Abort. okay. Okay, what else? What else? In English, in English, please, in English. Not in English. <laughs> yeah, what, what does that mean, okay? Tell me. Talking about the first step. Okay, I'm totally agree when you say that we need to have the right people on board. That means that we need to organize 
uh, in order to prevent that something happen, right? That means that there we are going to include what? We need to include manager, technician, uh, different staff of the company, operator, uh, yeah, yeah. System, system operators, what else? Mm -hmm. And what about the second step? What can you tell me about the second one? What is the second one? Tell me. The second step talks about what? El segundo paso habla sobre qué? ¿Qué nos dice? Hello. It said that we need to set our goal. That means that we need to have a very clear our goals. And also that uh, we are going to start training people in order that they can have the ability to resolve any problem that maybe we can face in the future. And what about number three? What can you tell me about number three? Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay. What 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 about number uh, step number three? What do you understand about it? Hello. There is something really important right here in number three because talks about inventory, the equipment and assets. Uh, do you know what is the meaning of the word asset? Do you remember? Yes or not? No. No? no. Do you remember when you talk about the vocabulary used in a in a balance? No. Activos. Excellent. Yeah. Activos. Okay. Right here in the step number three, what we are going to do is create a list of all assets you have responsibility for. And also you can record details, keep in mind everything that you are going to organize. And that way you are going to have your own plan in your company, right? Okay, I know that you remember. Just sometimes you need to close your eye and start in remembering where you have started. Algunas veces uno cierra sus ojos para acordarse, conectarse con ese conocimiento que ya vio ahí. Ok. The weather, the weather, the weather is changing a little bit because the rain is... Uh, it is still raining, but not at the same uh, way that was at the beginning. What about there in your places? How is the weather there? Tell me. Stop raining here. It is still raining there? Stop raining. Ah, stop raining, okay. Okay, based on the reading, we are going to resolve this uh, five sentences. Uh, the interaction we have it at the, at the beginning, right here, said read the following tips on how to organize 
a preventive maintenance plan. And later on, what we are going to do here is just, uh, for example, having the appropriate people on board, it is not relevant. Is that true or false? What do you think about? Try to read it and we are going to resolve. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing a little bit. Do you mind if I do that? No problem. Okay, try to look your material and Try to resolve your exercise. Remember that what you are going to do is you write down uh, true or false. It is, what do you think about this? Okay, but first of all, in order to continue, I need to check up the attendance again because Okay. Stop raining. Okay, Ana del Carmen. Present. Okay, okay. Angel. Present. Teacher. Cristina. Present. Giovanni. Present. Person. Present. Jose Miguel. Jose, Jose Miguel. I saw it connected. Juan Carlos. Present. Eh, Karina. Present. Linda. Present. María Idalia. María Idalia. María Julia. Present. Marlen. Present. Marvin Omar. Present. Ok. Uh, Nancy. Present teacher. Ahí está Nancy. Eh, Norma. Present teacher. Rafael. Present teacher. Raquel. Present teacher. Reinaldo. Present teacher. Suleima. Xiomara del Carmen. Present teacher. And Ana Cristina Chavarria. Present teacher. Okay, 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 okay. Going back again. Uh, I need you to tell me what do you think about the number one, having the appropriate people on board. It is not relevant. It is true or false for you? Yes, tell me. False. <laughs> okay, it is false. Because it, it is, it is uh, really important to have a uh, uh, the, the main people, right? Okay, number two, it is important to include people who understand of maintenance. True. It, is, it is true, okay? Uh, num number three. True. Setting goal is an option for the PNP. It is true, right? True. 
Uh, number four, for better result, creating a list of the assets is important. True. Oh. And number five, say according to the article to carry out the uh, PMP software is mandatory. True. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Will be mandatory or not? It's a good preventive maintenance. Okay, uh, the, the last one is full, right? Because it's not it's not mandatory. It's not a rule. Okay, let us continue now. Let me see. Okay, now we need to make a review about the idioms that we are studying in the last class. Do you remember that? Yes or not? Okay, I'm going to share it with you in order to refresh your memory. Vamos a refrescarles la memoria para que... Okay, do you remember who wants to read it? Let me get bigger, okay? Yes. Oh, okay, 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 the number one. My stomach hurts badly. My stomach is killing me. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, what is the, the idiom here? Which one? It's killing me. Ah, uh, it's killing me, okay. The second one, please. Two ones. As sick as a dog. Ah, okay. As sick as a dog. Mean to be very sick, right? Excellent. Uh, number four, please. Number four. Yes. To relax, to rest, take ah. it easy. Ah, number three. Okay, I'm sorry. To relax, to rest, is take it easy. Take it easy. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And number four. <laughs> Feeling well to be under the weather. Not feeling well to be under the weather, okay? Number five. In right condition, tip top shape. Okay, tip top shape. Yeah. Number six. Don't have time to, can afford to. Can afford to, okay. Uh, number seven. Hello. Many people have the same thing. There is something going around. Okay. Like, like the flu. Yeah. Like a virus. Like the COVID and something like that. Okay. Number eight. From the office to say you are sick to ah, call in. Call in sick. We are started. We are started yesterday, right? Okay. Uh, en español, antes de pasar ya a los siguientes, de que el solito se pasó, uh, me gustaría que tengamos muy claro eh, qué son los idioms para que así eh, no tengan todavía dudas al momento de resolver. Al momento de resolver eh, eh, las actividades. En sus palabras, así en español, díganme que es un idioma. Yo les di un concepto, pero estaba bastante grandecito, ¿no? Pero así. Modismos. Ok. Esa es su explicación. 
Yes. Okay. Alguien más? Hello. Hello. Es un significado diferente a lo que se escribe. Ah, ok. Pónganle, aten diferente. Pónganle atención a lo que ella dice. Please, pay attention to what she's saying. Es como la misma forma de decirlo, pero en otras palabras. Como mm. más, no sé. Ajá. Sinónimo. ¿Será eso de, de sinónimos? No, porque no se parecen nada las la, la, la palabras. ¿no? O sea, ese es el detalle, que son diferentes. Lo que se escribe es diferente a lo que significa. Entonces, creo que ahí erradica la dificultad del, del oído. Ajá. Remember the concept. I gave you a concept yesterday. No yesterday, but was uh, two days ago, I guess. Try to remember. And I said that an idiom is a phrase whose meaning is different from the meaning of each word considered separately. El concepto que yo les di fue que un idiom es una frase cuyo significado es diferente del significado de cada palabra al verlo en forma separada. ¿Sí? ¿Quedamos claros en eso? Yes. Yes, ah, Ok. Entonces, eh, significa que el idioma es, por ejemplo, a six as a dog. Al traducirlo, ¿cómo dice aquí? Enfermo como un perro. Ah, tan enfermo como un perro. Pero el... el nosotros. Pero ya eh, eso es al hacer la traducción así, separadamente. Pero ya el significado de esa frase, eso viene a ser como decir estar muy enfermo. Ya, no tiene nada que ver el doc ahí. Lo mismo aquí, take it easy, it's like relax. Sí, tip tap, chat. It is in great condition, not feeling well. It is like to be under the weather. For example, somebody say, teacher, may I go out now, please? Me puedo ir ahorita, profesor. Why? Because I feel under the weather. Así. ¿Y qué es lo que me está diciendo? ¿Qué me, qué me está diciendo? Se siente mal. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and this one, number six, I don't have time to, can afford to. Yeah. Intero say, uh, I don't have time to go with you. And you can say, I can afford going. Or etc. etc. I can afford to go with them. Uh, there is something going around. We already explained it. The, to phone to office to say you are six. Uh, we are study. Uh, that is called calling six, right? Okay. Based on this, and I suppose that you have clear ideas about this, let us go to the next step. Vayámonos entonces a los que nos corresponden hoy. Let me see. I need to erase. Necesito borrar aquí. This one and this one. And this is idioms part two. We are going to read the definition of these useful idioms. Okay. What about number one? What is number one? <laughs> Wipe out, wipe out, okay? Yeah, it, it, somebody say, um, somebody invite you to go to the, to the mall, for example. Imagine that you uh, finish working 
and somebody invite you to go to the mall and say, no, I can go because I, I am wipeouts. Yeah. What is, what, what are you saying? ¿Qué es lo que está diciendo usted? ¿Por qué no va al mall? I am very tired. Porque está? Tired. What is that? Very tired. Cansado. Bien, muy cansado. Ah, ok, ok. Así me aseguro de que sí estamos en, en, en sintonía. Uh, what about to keep one's head about water? What is that? To keep one head about water. It is like to say to survive. Yeah. To keep one's head about water. Imagine I got water from, from here to down and I keep my head out the water to survive. Later on, I'm going to give you some examples. Uh, what about this one? To have a lot of on one's place. What is the meaning of that? To have a lot of to do, a lot of duty to do, you know? Comprende esta? To have a lot of one's place. Hello. Mucho que hacer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Tener... Okay, to have a lot of to do, yes? Uh, mm -hmm. what, about, what about this? To scale back one's hours. It is equal to say to reduce the number of hours one wears. To scale back. This one, shuttle down. It is like to call, calm down, calm down. Yeah, relax, settle down, calm down. And suddenly, you said, I feel stressed out. I feel stressed out. It is equal to say under severe strain, very anxious. This is the meaning. Hang in there. What is that? What is hanging there? It's like be passion. And the last one, sleep one mind. It is like be forgotten. Okay, but we are going to see some example in order that you can understand what we are talking about. And maybe also we are going to include more. Okay, let me see. For example, here we have this one. Keep the sack. What is the meaning of this? Indicate that it is time to go to bed. Example of use, I got to get up early tomorrow. So I'm going to hit the sack. Do you understand this? Si lo traducimos este, ¿qué significaría? Así, a la española. A la española. ¿Qué significaría en español eso? Hit the sack. Yeah, golpear el saco. Ah, ajá. ¿Y quiénes son los golpear que el saco. ¿Y quiénes son los que hacen eso de golpear el saco? Boxer. Ah, boxer, you know? Yeah? Mm -hmm. hit, hit, hit the sacks. Indicate that it's time to go to bed. Example of use. I got to get up early tomorrow, so I'm going to hit the sack. Significa oh. entonces, significa entonces que Tienes que levantar temprano okay. y va a ir a dormir en la cama. Ah, ok. Eh, eh, estamos comprendiendo el uso, ¿cierto? Yes, teacher. Oh, ok, ok. Let, let me stop here. I need to be sure if I got more example about this one. Let me see.
Yeah, I got it here. I'm going to share it with you, okay? I hope that you can see it because uh, I need to get bigger. I got it. I got it. You need to have more example in order that you can uh, understand this uh, idiom, right? Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, I got an example here. I am really tired after all the exercise. I am going to hit the sack. What is the meaning? I am really tired after all the exercise. I am going to hit the sack. What is that? Tell me. What is the significance of this? Uh, this uh, de esa oración. Estaba realmente cansado después de... No recuerdo qué decía. De hacer ejercicio. De, de ese ejercicio, algo así. I am, I am really tired after all the exercise. Estoy realmente cansado después de todo el ejercicio. I am Yo voy a... Descansar. I'm going. Okay. Now, today you are going to put in practice this one. After, yes. the, after the class, you are going to say, oh, at least we finish. I'm going to hit, I'm the, going the, to the, hit the sack. I'm going to hit the sack. Okay. Y le va a decir el que está ahí, ¿qué? ¿Qué? ¿Ya te hiciste boxeadora? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Another example. After the long road trip, we were all deaf, tired, and ready to hit the higher as soon as we reach home. We also can use this, the higher. It's very common sometimes that the American use it, as we reach home. Instead of say, hit, hit, hit the sax also, they can use it, like hit the higher. Later on, you can look in dictionary. What is the meaning of this word? Okay. The next one, this job is really sucking the life out of me. I haven't hit the sacks in nearly 24 hours. Okay. Before I hit the sacks, I make it a point to check whether all the doors are locked and all the lights are turned off every day. Antes de que dice acá? Tell me. Antes de? Antes de golpear el saco. No, no. Antes de ir a la cama. Antes de irme a dormir. Antes de ir a dormir. Ah, no, no, no. No. no, no. I make the point to check whether all the door. Me aseguro de revisar que todas las puertas estén cerradas. Sí, y todas las y luces las estén... Las luces estén apagadas todo el día. Ah, ok. He wanted to hit the socks and did not feel like going out to party with his friends. ¿Sí? Y entonces ese... 
He wanted to see the, uh, to hit the socks. He quiso ir a la cama y did not feel like going. No, no se sintió como no para salir. Uh -huh. Okay. Como para salir a una fiesta con su familia. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, keep in mind, mantenga la mente este, por favor. Um, let me see what else do we have here. Well, now I got bigger. Okay, what about this? Let someone off the hook. What is the meaning? Then also we can have it get someone off the hook. Free of a difficult situation. Off the hook. Let someone off the hook. Is it like to, to feel free of a difficult situation or let off from blame or trouble? And we have some example here. Seeing it was his first offense and a minor one at that, he was let off the hook with just a warning. See? ¿Sí? Como fue su primera ofensa, alguien que cometió eh, algún delito, ¿no? And a minor one of that, y fue un delito menor, he was let off of the hook with just a warning. Con una simple advertencia. ¿Qué le pasó? Aquí arriba dice qué significa. Free of difficult situation. What is the meaning of the word free? Libre. Ah, ok. Entonces dice he was let off the hook. Como era una pena menor, él quedó libre con una simple advertencia. Libre. ¿Ya? Yeah? Free of a difficult situation or let off from blame or trouble. Another example. He, he was shared with uh, leaking confidential information, but I got him off the hook by voting for his integrity. See? A él, ¿qué cargos le pusieron a él? Sí. De información confidencial. Ah, ok. Fue acusado de cargos por información confidencial, pero I got him off the hook by vouching for his integrity. Pero yo dice, ajá. ¿Qué hizo? Sí. ¿Por qué cosa? Garantizando su qué? Su integridad. Ok, ok, ok. Try to keep in mind these two, please. Wipeouts. What is wipeout? Wipeout means tired or exhausted. And the example in my sister is wipeout from working all the time. Uh, I did not sleep well last night. I am wipeout. The trip wipe wipe me out and I I just fl flew over 24 hours I am wiped out se comprende este si ¿Sí? yes okay it is tired yes. and what about this one oops sorry okay uh remember that we were talking about this it is called keep your head of the wall about water what is the meaning of that the meaning is to just be able to manage when you have a financial difficulties mantener eh, la cabeza fuera del agua es como ser capaz de poder sobrevivir en dificultades financieras difíciles for example, we can say we have so little money that we can hardly keep our head above water. 
Comprendemos el ejemplo. We have so little money that we can hardly keep our heads about, yes. about water. ¿Sí? Yes. Okay. Let me see what else do we have here. Veamos qué más tenemos por acá. And what about this one? To have a lot of, a lot on one's plate. What is that? The definition is to be very busy and have many things to do. Do you remember at the beginning we talked about this? Okay, hold on a second. I need to adjust something here. Hold on. Okay, okay. Okay, I don't know if you are taking notes. No sé si están tomando nota de algunos. Because you are going to need it. You need to learn it. Yes, teacher. Okay. Because if you don't do it, si no lo hacen, it's not my fault. I'm giving you all the tools. Le estoy dando todas las herramientas para que se las aprendan, ¿ok? Ok, I'm back, I'm back about this, ¿ok? The definition is to be very busy and have many things to do. And the example that I have say, I don't think I can help you with your prior. I have a lot, of, a lot on my plate this week. And Betty works two jobs plays guitar in a band and volunteers at a school. She has a lot on her plate. Okay, I need that somebody read it for me. The example, please. You don't want to read, right? Anybody? Yes, ah, okay, 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 okay. I don't think I can. Can I help you with your project? I have a lot on my plate this week. Okay. Okay. I'm going to read it again. I, I don't think I can help you with your project. I have a lot of, I have a lot on my plate this week. Okay. The next example, please. Me. Okay, tell me. Baby works two jobs, plays guitar in a band, and volunteers at the school. She has a lot of on her plate. Okay. In other words, the uh, do you understand what is the meaning of uh, have a lot of on my plate? El significado de este idioma. No, muy ocupado. You have to be very busy and have many things to do. Okay. Okay, make a screenshot, make a screenshot. Vayan haciendo captura. Bueno, pues. Okay, what about a scale back one hour? What is that meaning? Uh, to reduce the number of hours one's words. Example, when Christine had a baby, she decided to scale back her hours and just work part-time. The synonym is to cut back one's hours. What is the meaning then? The meaning is to reduce the number of hours one work. El significado es reducir el número de horas que uno trabaja. Por eso el ejemplo dice que cuando Cristina tuvo el bebé, decidió scale back her hours, es decir, reducir el número de horas. And just work part-time. Y se quedó solamente trabajando medio tiempo. 
Okay. Is that right with the example? Comprenden el ejemplo? Yep. Yes? Yes. Okay. Solo uno me dice yes y el resto no me dice yes. I don't know why the rest don't want to talk. I don't know why. Teacher. Hello. Is the idiom is, is uh, reducir el número de horas, scale back one's house. Scale back one's. One, one, yes. Scale. Scale. Back. Back. Once, once, hours, hours, ah, okay. yes, es que hours, once, once, hours. Okay. Eso significa, ¿verdad? Significa reduce the number el of number hours. Of horas. Okay. So, reducir el número de horas que uno trabaja. En, entonces aquí en el ejemplo, en lugar de decir she decided to, to reduce the number of hours of work. Entonces, en vez de decir eso, mejor decimos, uh, she decided to scale back her hours and just work part-time. ¿Comprendido? Yes. Yes or no? Yes, yes. Yes, teacher. Uh, al menos ahora me dijeron dos. And I'm waiting more than two. Okay, what about hanging, hanging there? What is the meaning of this? Somebody wants to read it? Hello, are you there? Are you there? I'm here. Okay, who wants to read it? Uh, the meaning. Oh, okay, meaning. Okay, the idiom. Hang it there is an informal and friendly expression that people use as a way to encourage someone to not give up, giving up, give up. To, be, give up, to be persistent or stay calm, to not lose hope and keep on fitting. Even thought is the changing situation. Okay, keep him fighting, keep him fighting, even though it is a challenging situation. That is the meaning of this expression. And we have an example here, hanging there, and you never know what you might achieve. Hanging there, you'll soon catch on to the language. This is for you, right? I know things are thought right now, just hang in there. Okay. It is like to say, don't give up. No te rindas. Sé persistente. Mantente quieto. No pierda la esperanza. Mantente peleando. Aunque la situación sea como eh, un reto. That is the meaning of hanging there. And maybe this is the last one, sleep one's mind. The definition is to forget, to, to be forgotten. And an example, I'm sorry, I didn't come to your party. It sleep my mind. Her birthday completely slipped my mind. I forgot to wish her happy birthday yesterday. When we are going to use this sleep my mind? Hello. ¿Cuándo yo voy a usar a Sleep My Mind? Cuando se me olvida todo. Ah, when I when I see your face, when I see your face is here and I don't see the name of uh, imagine that Xiomara no tenga el nombre acá. Y entonces yo le pregunto, "Hello lady. What's your name?" Sleep My Mind. Could you remember your name? ¿Y cuál va a ser la respuesta de ella? Hello, teacher. My name is Yomara. I'm here. Eso es lo que ella me va a decir. ¿Cierto, Xiomara? 
Hello, Xiomara. Are you there? Yes, yes, teacher. Ah, yes. okay, okay, okay. Xiomara, Xiomara is there. Xiomara is there. Okay, 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 okay. What else we are going to study? Okay, let me see what time it is. According to the time. Okay, let us see the book. Let me see the book here. Okay, uh, we are going to work in exercise two and three. Please go to your book. I'm going to show you here and you are going to resolve some of these exercises. Para que no se me estén yendo allá. Okay, we are going to start working exercise two. And what you are going to do is that you are going to choose, choose three idioms from the box above and write a sentence for each. And later on, we are going to compare and share with somebody else, okay? Let us work in exercise two first. You are going to choose only just three. Usted va a elegir tres de los idioms que hemos estudiado and you are going to give me three examples. Me va a dar un ejemplo para cada uno de ellos. Ok. Hello. Please answer me, answer me. Hello. Ok, por ratos me, me, se me imagina, será que se me durmieron. What's going on there? Yeah, ah. casi. No, 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 no yet, no yet. So please try to practice. Okay, let us practice now. Okay, you are free to choose. Eh, eh, usted es libre de elegir los tres idioms que le gusten y de esos me va a crear eh, los ejemplos. Un ejemplo para cada uno de los idioms. Do it now, please. Do it now. Okay, I need that all of you uh, jot down your example. Don't hit the sack now, please. Don't hit the sack. Thank you, Chair. Hello, Marlon. I have got a busy day tomorrow, so I think I hit the sack. Ah, okay. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. What else? What else do you have? Remember that you need to choose three. Necesitamos tres de esos. With different, different idioms.
Okay, and before you go, I need to share with you some material that is going to help you. Let me see if I can do it now. If I can, I'm gonna do it as soon as I finish the session. But I'm going to share with you some material that is going to help you, but you need to read it, okay? It is called the most common English idioms. This list is uh, extremely common in everyday conversation in the United States. And also you will hear them in movies and TV shows and can use them to make your English sound more like the of uh, Navy speakers. Do you know what is a Navy speaker? No? No. Navy speaker is uh, like a, a, an American. A gringo is a Navy speaker. Uh. Yeah, and when somebody use idioms, it tend to help you to sound like an American. Cuando nosotros ya comenzamos a usar idioms, eso nos ayuda a sonar más con el acento American. Eso es como eh, un hablante nativo del español. Que imagínense que, que, que un extranjero está aprendiendo español y no sabe decir algunas palabras que, como, como medias eh, complejas que nosotros usamos. Díganme una de esas. Ah, ya los desconcentré. En casa, en casa de red, un cuchillo de palo. Ah, ok. ¿El qué dijo? Imagínese. ¿Qué vale. dijo don Narciso? En casa de red, un cuchillo de palo. Ni yo sé qué significa eso. Ah, ok, ok, ok. Dejémoslo ahí. Go, go, just try to think in English. Don't worry about Spanish, ok. Okay, as soon as you finish, just let me know, please. I'm asking you just uh, write down three sentences. Les estoy pidiendo que me escriban solo tres oraciones. And remember, you don't have to give up. Don't give up, don't give up. You need to continue fighting. And I recommend you to have uh, something to drink uh, close to you if you feel uh, really tired. If you if you feel that you want to hit the sack, just drink something, some liquids. Si siente que ya se me está durmiendo, por favor tenga agua o algo ahí para que se tome algo y se mantenga porque Sometimes it's really difficult, you know? Or you can stretch if you want, you can stretch. Okay, let me see the name of the person that is going to be with me. 10 minutes at the end of the class. Let me see the name. And that person is, let me see, who is it? Norma Carolina Villeda Avalos. Are you there, Norma? Yes, teacher. Ah, okay. Are you going to stay? 
out with me uh, at the end? Yes, teacher. Okay, thank you. Okay. I am all ears. A esa no la hemos visto, ¿cierto? No. Ah, but you are going to learn it. Tú sabes que eres el único y que te adoro y eres... ¿Qué estás haciendo? Jesus, what, what is that? <laughs> ah, y esas declaraciones. <laughs> okay, we need to be careful, you know. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, you are um, writing down your example. I'm going to I'm going to share this one with, with you. Let me see if I can do it now, please. I'm gonna put it here. Okay, as soon as you finish, just let me know because as I told you, I'm all ears for you, okay? What is the meaning of the expression? Okay, the meaning is all ears, saying that you are all ears mean the other person has got your full attention in terms of listening to him or to her. Example, kid in my class were all ears when I was telling them the story. Okay, what is the meaning of the expression all ears? Ah, están escribiendo, por eso no me oyeron, cierto. When I say I am all ears, that means that you cut all my attention in order to hear you, in order to listen to you, right? Okay, time is over, time is over, time is over, I'm sorry. I do really sorry. Okay, I, I need to, uh, to hear at least two, or three volunteers who wants to read your example that you have there and later on tomorrow we are going to do it okay who want to who want to read it quien quiere quien quiere leer sus oraciones me okay que, cristina yes. 
I need one mean the direction, the place. Could, could I'm going to, huh? Okay, repeat it again, please. I, I leave one mean the direction, the place. Ah, uh, I sleep one. I slid my mind. My mind, the direction, direction, the place. Okay, okay. I got you what you want to say. I going to go the bad, the bad because with out. Read again. I going to go because with out. Se le voy entrecortado, por eso es que la última frase no se la comprende. With, with, out. Very tired. Very, very, uh, okay, sweep out, sweep out. Sweep out. Hi, in the tour, in the field, the bank. Okay. Only that. Okay, thank you. Somebody else, please. Somebody else, somebody else, somebody else. Hurry up. Alguien más quiere leer sus ejemplos? Hello. Somebody else, please. Only three example, no more than three. Hello, hello. Somebody else want to read it? No? Maybe you want to hit the sack, right? Okay, anybody else is going to read? Ya nadie más va a leer sus ejemplos? Yes or not? Okay, time is over. Uh, I hope that for tomorrow you can have it and try to read it, try to share it with, with us, okay? Well, uh, I'm going to stay only up with, let me see. Well, but first of all, I need to check up the attendance again. Sense to God, we finish. Because we have a lot of problem with the raining, with the signal of, of internet. But we are here. Okay, Ana del Carmen. Present. Angel. Angel. Present, teacher. Cristina. Present. Giovanni. Giovanni Alexander. Person. Present. Jose Miguel. Jose Miguel. Karina. Present. Linda Ivette. María y Dalia. No la vimos ahora. María Julia. Present. Marlene. Present. Marvin. Nancy. Present, teacher. 
Norma. Present teacher. Rafael. Present teacher. Uh, Raquel. Present teacher. Reinaldo. Present teacher. Suleima. Xiomara del Carmen. Present teacher. And Ana Cristina Chavarria Flores. Teacher. Uh, let me check out. Juan Carlos Palacios. I'm here. Yes, I mentioned your name. Um, not it. No, lo mencioné. Okay. Okay. Maybe uh, I, I just uh, thinking that I did, that I didn't. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I hope to see you tomorrow. So please, I need that you read it, this part, this topic. Uh, lean por favor este tema eh, los ejemplos and that way you are going to increase your knowledge um, as soon as I finish I'm going to send you some, some material that is, that, that is going to help you too tan pronto finalice la sesión les enviaré eh, un documentito que les va a ayudar mucho sí ok I'm going, oh, eh, tell me, Angel. Nos iba a ayudar en la tarea 14, de la número 2. Ah, le, les explico así rapidito. Qué bien que me lo pide. Eh, en el ejercicio 2 de la, de la tarea 14, había como una inconsistencia en la plataforma. Es, lo reporté en la mañana, espero que a estas alturas ya se haya resuelto. Sí, porque no, no se había marcado cuál era la buena. Por eso es que cualquiera de las que ustedes eligen, todas salen malas. Entonces, cuando uno hace ese tipo de, de ejercicio, ya me mole así, uno, uno como docente o como facilitador tiene que elegir cuál es la respuesta buena. Sí, en ese caso no se ha elegido. Se, se, entonces ya se hizo la observación. Hagan la prueba y si no, me dan eh, un poco de paciencia para que puedan solventar eso. ¿Ok? Thank you, teacher. Ok, okay. excelente. Ok, bye bye. See you later. Bye bye. See you later. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. bye. Good, good, night. Night. Good, good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Ok. Xiomara, bye bye, Xiomara, Marlene, was a pleasure. Raquel, you did, bye bye, Raquel. Raquel, bye bye. Okay, welcome back, Norma, Carolina, Villeda, Avalos. Thank you. I don't know if you have any question about any topic. No sé si tiene mm, algo. Yes, idioms, teacher. Ah, okay, idioms. Okay, okay. It's it confused for me because uh, the, the, in Spanish, la, el significado, pues a veces yo lo traduzco literal y okay. creo que es el error que. que sí, va. Le, sí, le explico así rapidito. Uh -huh. El concepto de lo que es un idioma dice que es una frase cuyo significado es diferente a la traducción de cada una de las palabras en forma literal. Entonces, por eso uh -huh. es que tiende a confundirse. O sea, el significado que le aparezca cuando usted lo traduce no es eso lo que quiere decir, sino es otra cosa. ¿Ya? Sería como memorizar entonces este... La oracióncita, Tiche. El idioms. Sí. El idiom. uh -huh. Sí. Es como crear un vocabulario. Cuando digo vocabulario, es como ir aumentando, eh, como ir haciendo un banco de datos de, uh -huh. cada, de cada una de ellas. Ah, hay un documento, ahí tengo un documentito por acá que les voy a, a, a facilitar. Déjeme ver si lo, no lo veo por aquí. Ok, es cierto. 
I'm going to share it with you. Se lo voy a compartir así rápido. Can you see it? Yes, teacher. Okay, okay, okay. Right here it says the most common English idioms. This is the idiom, this is the meaning, and this is the use. But let me get bigger this. Okay, son los, los más comunes. Uh, aquí aparece el idioms, aquí aparece el significado, y aquí aparece como el uso. Como generalmente aquí le va a salir que va a decir que como parte de una oración. Pero lo que no más nos interesa es uh, this column and this one. Este es el idioma y este es el significado. Entonces usted eh, lo va a ir leyendo y así va a ir viendo cuál es el, el, el significado. Por ejemplo, este de beat around the bush. Eso significa avoid saying what you mean, usually because it is uncomfortable. Como que evitar lo que uno realmente quiere decir, pues. A veces it's better to say beat around the bush. Be yeah, better late than never. Better to arrive late than not to come at all. ¿Sí? Este es como quien dice mejor tarde que nunca. Que sí, nunca. No. Uh -huh. Y así sí, sucede. Es que entiendo muy bien, <risa> <risa> Es que oh. hay otros que son más complejos. Yeah, yeah. Por ejemplo, esta, mire. Si yo le, di, le, escribo, ah, okay, le, okay. le Si yo le escribo a usted y me dice, uh, Teacher, I'm going to take the test now. ¿Ya? Yeah? Entonces hace break, mm -hmm. break a leg, break a leg. It is. En vez de decir good luck. Pero, pero también, eh, bueno, aquí por ejemplo dice, call it a day, stop working something. And, and there you are going to find out a lot of examples. Ahí va a aparecerle un montón de ejemplos. Entonces lo que uno tiene que hacer es grabárselo de esta parte de la izquierda. ¿Ya? Ese es el documento que va a compartir. Teacher. Sí, este, este es el que le voy a, le voy a pasar para que para que le den una leidita y es, los que les interesen okay, eh, se, se las van a ir grabando. Sí, eso, eso no implica que se las se la doy para que ya todo que es mandatorio que se las van a memorizar, no. Es para que las tengan por ahí guardaditas y de repente eh, les sirvan. Por, At the end of the document you are going to find out some example. Van a encontrar algunos ejemplos de de algo otros que no los vimos ahí por ejemplo este not rock science not rock science means something that is not difficult algo que no no, no, que diga, no tiene mayor ciencia digamos ah, algo así eh, podría ser por ejemplo mm -hmm. dice driving a car is not rock science I don't know why people don't know how to drive better yo no sé por qué la gente no puede manejar bien Sí, sí, estamos diciendo que driving a car is not a rock science. Otro ejemplo podría ser, the internet is not rock science. It is easy to learn how to use the internet. O sea, en vez de decir que eh, es así. complicado. Ajá, uh -huh, the internet is not rock science. Sí, el internet es algo fácil. My sister have a new job. Her job is not rock science. But she really likes her new job. Mi hermana tiene un, un nuevo trabajo, pero su nuevo trabajo no es complicado. ¿Sí? I'm trying to learn to use my new computer. I don't know why I cannot figure it out. It is not a rock science. And so on. You are going to find out as an example, like off the hook. De este ya les, más, les di algunos ejemplos. Uh, and also, let me see if there is something here. Ah, for example, this. Make a long, make a long story short. This is cut a long story short. Long story short. And these are kind of uh, synonym. And we have example, make a long story short, he still stay in the apartment. 
but now it is owned by someone else. To make a long story short, they decide to get back together for the sake of the kid and are now doing pretty good. Entonces, el significado de esa, ¿cuál sería? The making, making a long story short. Mm. Como hacer de algo grande, no, de algo pequeño, algo grande, algo así. Mm, ¿Cómo le digo? Como cuando estamos hablando en español y usted tiene que contarle algo a alguien. Y le dice, mira, para no alargar la historia, al final pues ya están juntos otra vez. ¿Me comprendió? Como un resumen, como un resumen ¿no? uh, acortar la historia. Algo así. Sí, cabal. Um... Como para evitar contar la historia completa y nos vamos al punto exacto. Uh -huh. ¿Comprende? Sí, teacher. Oh, okay. <risa> es algo complicado, pero sí es de... So, yeah, 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 the problem is that in order to handle this, we need to get in mind. Hay mucho que aprender de vocabulario para poder mantenerlas ahí con nosotros. But I'm going to share it with you. As soon as I finish, I'm going to send you to, to the group, okay? Another question okay. that you have? ¿Algo otra no, pregunta no. que tenga? Uh -huh. Ok, lo que, lo, lo que le recomiendo es, okay. lo que le recomiendo es que eh, cuando ya se los aprenda, si se aprende, un ejemplo, si aprende tres, trate usted de crear sus propias oraciones usando ya los idioms. ¿Sí? Okay. Usted va creando sus propias oraciones. Okay. De, y de esa forma le va a ir funcionando bien. Y ya cuando las tenga me puede preguntar, mire, esta, hice esta, ¿está bien esta? ¿Ya? Yeah. Ok. Ok. okay. What's a pleasure to see you. Ok. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Bye.